Welcome to Mathematics with M's Grade 11 Equations. And in this video, we're going to look at completing the square. Don't forget to give me a huge like and to subscribe. Subscription is free. Some important theory first. Completing the square is a technique used to rewrite a quadratic expression of the form ax squared plus bx plus c in the form a into x plus b squared plus q. The application of completing the square is extremely useful when sketching the graphs of a quadratic function and determining the maximum or minimum values of quadratic expressions. Quadratic equations can also be solved using this technique. However, before discussing the technique of completing the square, it is necessary to first deal with the concept of quadratic expressions, which are perfect squares. If the square root of a number works out to be a rational number, then that number is a perfect square. For example, the numbers 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, etc. are all perfect squares since the square root of each number is a rational number. So the quadratic expressions x plus 2 squared, x minus 5 squared, x plus 1 squared, 4 times x minus 2 squared are also perfect squares. Right, let's do some uh, investigation. Show that the following trinomials are perfect squares. Let's start with the first one, x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now it is because if you, you'll notice that if you factorize, you will get two brackets which are exactly the same, namely x plus 1 times x plus 1, which is x plus 1 squared. Number two, x squared minus 6x plus 9. Again, if you factorize, you'll notice you get the very same brackets, x minus 3 times x minus 3, which is x minus 3 squared. And then the third one, x squared plus 8x plus 16, the same thing here. If you factorize, you'll notice the two brackets are the same. So therefore, x plus 4 squared. So, determine the value of c, that is the last term or the so-called constant term, in each of the following quadratic expressions, if the expressions are perfect squares. So now, if they are perfect squares, we look at a, then x squared plus 4x plus c, then that c is normally, now take note, a half times 4. 4 is that uh, a coefficient of the middle term. So it's a half times 4, and you square all of that. And therefore, you get 2 squared, which is 4. For the next one, the same thing here, a half times negative 10, right? And then square that, and you get a 25. The third one, a half times negative 5, all squared, square that, and you get 25 or 4. So therefore, the rule is half times that 4, which we normally also call b, if you remember, ax squared plus bx plus c, then that is that, so it's a half times b, and you square it to complete a square. Let's rewrite the following expressions in the form a into x plus b squared plus q by completing the square. If you look at a, so the first step is, is to complete the square. Now remember the formula now, a half times that coefficient of x, which is the b value, and all square. So it's a half times 2 all squared, which is 1. So now we add that 1 to x squared plus 2x and then subtract it so that it it not to change the value of the expression. So if we add a 1 squared, you must also subtract it, remember, because we don't want to change the original value. So, and then, of course, we will uh, get rid of the brackets. And then the first three terms forms then a perfect square if you factorize, namely x plus 1 all squared minus 1. And there you are written in the form a x plus b squared. So a is therefore a 1 in front of the bracket. Our p is norm is 1 and our q is negative 1. Let's do b now. 
x squared minus 9x. So remember the formula, a half times 9, and you must square that. It gives you 81 over 4. So now you, of course, then the square root of 81 over 4, it comes from negative 9 over 2 times negative 9 over 2. So you add it to the expression and also simultaneously subtract it. Then the first three terms will be a perfect square if you factorize x minus 9 over 2 all squared minus 81 over 4. And there is written in that form. Let's look at c now. So x squared plus 8x plus 10. So in this case, we have all, we have three terms and not two terms. When we are completing the square, we will only consider the first two terms and work for them, while the last term will just run along. So remember now, you must first put 10 one side. And just, but don't throw it away, you need to add 10. So we only can look at x squared plus 8x and complete the square. So half times 8 all squared gives you 16. So you again add 4 squared and subtract 4 squared. But don't remember, there's still plus 10. Then the first three terms will be x plus 4 all squared. And now we can say negative 16 plus 10, which is negative 6. Right, and there we have a little exercise which you can work on with the memo below. So please work through each one and then check whether you can get exactly the same answers. Right, so I hope you found this video useful. So this is uh, Ahmed Suleiman with Mathematics for M's. Don't forget to give me a huge like and to subscribe. Remember, subscription is free.